It is 1918, and Einstein published his general theory of relativity just a couple years ago, and has yet to test it in a regime that will set it apart from Newtonian gravity, exchanging information on these two theories, especially in regards to how they account for the orbits of the planets in our solar system. To that end, the following questions emerge. How was the theory developed? How does it explain the motion of the planets? And more specifically, does it solve the problem of Mercury's orbit? Now, an apple did not fall on Newton's head, but he may have watched one fall from an apple tree near his house. When he saw the apple fall, the light bulb that went off in his head was not that gravity existed. He and his contemporaries already knew that. Instead, Newton realized that gravity might extend so far above the Earth that it could be the force holding the moon in its orbit. Newton published his Law of Universal Gravitation on July 1687 in the Principia, from which he became internationally recognized. And since then, his laws of motion have stood up to intense scrutiny and testing over 200 years. All of the planets orbit the sun in an oval shape, as described by Kepler's laws. So there is a point in that orbit that is closest to the sun, called the perihelion. We observe that as Mercury orbits the sun, the perihelion in fact advances by a small amount. Newton's theory does not fully explain this precession of Mercury's perihelion. There is a 43 arc second per century discrepancy between the Newtonian prediction and the observed precession, hence proving the universal gravitation law incorrect, at least for such extreme scenarios. So, now let's change the perspective. Unlike Newton, from his library in his Berlin apartment, Einstein saw a man fall from a nearby rooftop, fortunately into a pile of soft rubbish. When the man described the event to Einstein, he said that he did not feel the sensation of gravity as he fell, which he would have expected to pull him violently downwards. While Einstein was extending his special theory of relativity, which applies to systems undergoing uniform motion, to systems with non-uniform motion, he remembered the falling man, and realized that gravitation might actually be described as a non-uniform motion. He published his general theory of relativity in 1915. Einstein's theory proposes that space and time are one entity, space-time. Any object with mass will curve space-time, with the mass of the object determining the amount of curvature produced. Free-falling objects follow the shortest path through the curved space-time. We observe objects attracted to massive objects as they follow these paths, and we call this gravity. Einstein's gravity becomes evident only in extreme conditions, such as near very massive objects, which could not be replicated in the laboratories during his time. Because of this, the theory has yet to be put to any rigorous testing. But luckily for him, a solar eclipse emerging only a couple of months after his publication will bring him much ease. The Sun is the largest object in our solar system, so according to Einstein's general theory of relativity, the Sun will warp space-time in the solar system by the largest amount. The planets simply follow the shortest path through space-time around the Sun, thus explaining their orbits. Now, going back to the discrepancy fabricated by Mercury's orbit and Newton's laws, unlike Newton's laws themselves, Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity provides a full explanation for the observed precession of Mercury's perihelion. As Mercury moves towards its perihelion, or closer to the Sun, it moves deeper into the Sun's gravity well. Its motion into this region of greater curvature of space-time causes the perihelion to advance by a certain amount. Einstein's general theory of relativity predicts exactly the amount of perihelion advance seen in Mercury, thus denying Newton's laws of universal gravitation and verifying his recently published theory. On May 29, 1919, a total solar eclipse occurred. The eclipse was ideal for measuring the bending of starlight by the Sun. Totality will last for over 5 minutes, one of the longest eclipses in recent history. Also, the Sun will be directly in front of the Hades, a bright cluster of stars in the constellation Taurus. Newtonian gravity predicts the angle of deflection of the light will be 0.87 arcseconds for the stars near the Sun during this eclipse. Einstein's general relativity predicts the angle of deflection will be 1.75 arcseconds, about 2 times more. And when the moon passed in between the sun and the earth, all the astronomers around the world began gathering data. And soon after, them and Einstein himself were amazed by the results. The angle of deflection was precisely 1.75 arcseconds, just like he predicted. 